Good evening, good afternoon, and welcome to the Sino Traders Group. This is our weekend wrap-up trade plan for October 5th, 2008. At SinoTraders.com, effective video trade plans delivered daily. And what we do each night, I put together a video technical analysis trade plan of the market, identifying uh, new trades each night. That's what's nice about our, our videos, is that it's not about catching up. We Every night we put it together new trades for the next day. But on the weekends, we want to make sure we're reading some blogs and newsletters and checking our sectors to see where things are trending. You know, again, something that I've said a plenty of time that I've got from old Mark K. Latimer, which is trade the charts. The charts will tell you where we're going. Uh, they'll, they'll tell you how traders are feeling about it. So trade your charts. Um, and obviously, when we have our trade plans and routines in place, we'll have time to go and spend with our families. So, um... This week certainly was historic on many different levels. Uh, starting off with Monday, uh, it was also a very volatile week. But Monday, the House voted against the bailout bill, and that sent the market in a free fall. We had um, the S&P had its worst down day, uh, percentage-wise, since the uh, crash of 1987. We also had news on Monday that the banks in Europe were starting to fail, and um, some assistance was needed for those European banks. And that the F FDIC was backing a bailout of Wachovia through a purchase by Citigroup. A two point, Citigroup was going to purchase Wachovia for $2.2 billion. All that was Monday. So the market rallied on Tuesday in hopes that the House uh, you know, recognized the severity of its actions and that the bill would pass. On Wednesday, the Senate did pass the bill. And without being political, it is important to note that they added 100 I think it was $100 billion in pork uh, to the bill. So there's a government being government. Um, then we had the initial jobless claims, which reached its highest point since September of 2001. It was 153,000 jobless claims, maybe 159. Um, and then the S&P sold off after the bill uh, was approved by the House on Friday. So was that sell the news? Was that uh, the traders offering their sentiment about this whole market conditions as a whole? We'll have to see. Um, on the corporate side, we had a lot going on with General Electric. Uh, if you remember last week, we talked about General Electric lowering its forecast for the rest of the year. Um, and this to, uh, this week, they offered uh, they announced a stock offering, which was 10% below the previous day price. It was like $22. And then Warren Buffett announced that he was going to invest $3 billion in a deal. But what's interesting about that is that they uh, agreed to pay him and Berkshire Hathaway 10% dividend. So many people were wondering how severe is the situation when they agreed to pay a 10% dividend. Also, we had Wells Fargo come in and announce that it's going to try to buy Wachovia on a deal that did not require FDIC assistance, uh, $7 a share. And of course, that sent Citigroup into a tizzy because you know, they already had a deal to purchase uh, Wachovia. So a lot of news definitely this week, a lot of things for people to react to. So where are we going this week? Well, we have nothing tomorrow. So will the sell-off for Friday afternoon uh, and sell -off, the sell the news of the bailout continue on the Monday? We'll see. Uh, Tuesday, we've got the FOMC minutes. We'll see what the language was. Uh, remember, they did nothing uh, the last time. Uh, and that's really going to be the only big thing uh, uh, coming up this week. So there's nothing going on tomorrow. You can see no... Economic news, no earnings really of importance tomorrow. It is important to note that Alcoa has earnings on Tuesday. So that is the kickoff of our new earnings season, the third quarter earnings season, uh, kickoff on Tuesday. So we do have a couple more coming in. And we already talked about G G General Electric, so we'll see how the market reacts to that. I did want to go ahead and take a quick moment just again, Sino Traders 30 Day Challenge. Each day we're taking a different aspect of learning how to trade and focusing on that. Um, so far we've covered financial literacy, long term and short term investing, um, technical analysis versus fundamental analysis. Uh, Today is going to be uh, decision making time where you have to make a choice about what type of trade you're going to be. I think we're, we're going to move into the psychology of trading and actual technical indicators. So go ahead and be sure to come over to uh, Sino Traders 30 Day Challenge, which is at 30daychallenge.sinotraders.com.
So let's go ahead and take a look at the sectors. As we begin our look at the studies, uh, remember something that we said previously, which is trade the charts. Um, we are at a point this week, you know, for the past probably month, um, when I've done this portion for you, it's basically been, don't know which way the market's going, so here's some sectors to look at. Previous to then, we, we would go sector by sector. Well, we're at a point where, you know, again, we've had the big news, and now we're letting the traders show us where we're going. And the charts are saying that we're headed down. Now, who knows? We know that we have to be prepared to go both ways. We have to be able to look at things in multiple ways, but our char charts are not good. So last week we talked about agriculture, and you can see how it dropped, certainly bearish. Uh, next we have is energy. Um, same thing we talked about last week, went down. We talked about oil and gas last week, went down. We talked about metals last week, down. Uh, still, you know, these first, uh, you know, several sectors, we talked about all of them, and they all did go down. Now we're going to start looking at some other ones. Here's consumer durables, certainly looks weak. Um, banking, in the blog world, financial services, eh, weak, but you can see it's kind of at a support level. Uh, investor brokerages, wouldn't mess with it. Uh, again, wouldn't mess with brokers at a support level and kind of consolidating right now. Hasn't really made its mind up what it's going to do. Insurance, wouldn't mess with it. Real estate. Looking weak, and you can see this 425 support has been broken. We kind of getting past this week. If it continues to go down, I would go bearish. Otherwise, we're in a big consolidation for the past four months. So we really want to confirm that it's going down. Drugs, eh, weak, but I want to mess with it. Same thing with biotechs. Aerospace looking weak. Uh, so we definitely probably want to look at Boeing. Uh, uh, manufacturing looks weak. Look at resource and casinos. Week broke this key support level here. Uh, retail, looking weak. Now, we have some support here in 6675, so I'm um, not going to go all bearish yet, but certainly looking weak. Transportation, looking weak. Uh, airlines, as oil has been going up, back up, at least here in Atlanta, although we finally have gas, we might see something in airlines, but I wouldn't mess with it right now. Trucking looks weak. Shipping, weak. Uh, railroads, weak, computers, weak, software, weak. Do you see the theme here? Nothing looks bullish. Nothing. We have some that might be at some support levels, but nothing at all is looking bullish. So with that being said, we are going to get back to our, our process of where we looked at some stocks to look at. Um, unfortunately, that's going to be in our other videos. You have to download the full video. Uh, for our YouTube and other folks, we're going to move on to our education portion of the video. So now it's time to go through our educational portion of our trade plan video. And we're using the book Trading the Zone by um, Mark Douglas, uh, Chapter 3, Taking Responsibility, Reacting a Loss. And last week when we talked about is that you're not going to be able to trade effectively if you're trying to prove something. If you're trying to say, I'm right, the market's wrong. You're not going to be able to trade effectively because you're going to blur out the information that's telling you that you're wrong. Um, for example, how many of you have ever been in a trade that you rationalized or made some case for why you should stay in it? It's going against you. It's going against you. But you make a case for uh, staying in, a, in that trade. You use indicators that you don't normally use. You uh, are looking at every tick up and down. What can make me stay in this trade? Uh, when you know that you should be getting out. Now, obviously, the first and foremost, um, I've always said that I've always lost money when I trade on emotions. I trade on breaking my rules. The rules are what the rules are. You know, you can't change the rules in the middle of the game. Um, so, um, having clear, defined rules will always save you money in the long run. Yes, the trade could come back in your favor, but nine times out of ten, it won't. So, having clear, defined rules of when you get out, when the interday breaks the 20 moving average, uh, daily chart breaks the 50, wh whatever, whatever your rules are, being a long term, short term investor, you gotta make your rules and you gotta go ahead and follow those rules. Sometimes it's best to even go ahead and automatically put in contingent orders so that you are no longer making decisions, but your rules are. So, um, you know, again, set your rules, clearly define them, and then follow the rules because. 
when you start trading by emotions, you are guaranteed to lose money. So to get the full version of our podcast, remember this is a, our YouTube, MySpace folks, all of you are getting this short version. Um, go ahead and download that, uh, subscribe podcast at HTML. If you're ready to get our daily videos that uh, identifies new trades each night for uh, the next trading session, there's our link for that. We're still taking uh, testimonials for a free two-week membership. Um, although my computer's been down, I haven't been able to get to that email, but I'll be able to get to it today. And again, Ascendant Traders 30-Day Challenge. Go check it out. We're going through it. We've been talking about fundamentals and technical analysis, long-term, short-term. And we're just going to, this week, going to get into psychology of trading and technical analysis uh, and te different uh, technical indicators. So go ahead and check that out. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks.